My whole life, I have loved a good pasta and vegetable salad. And when I was growing up, there was one that my grandmother made that had broccoli in it and some grapes. Well, I have updated that. This is how you make it. So I have a pot of vigorously boiling water and I'm gonna add quite a bit of salt. One of the keys to making pasta for this recipe or for any is to generously salt the water. Add what you think it's gonna need and a little bit more. They say it should taste like ocean water when it's ready. And I'm gonna add in my pasta. I'm using this really attractive, delicious, squiggly curly shape and you can use any shape you want so long as it's short and stubby you want something that's going to hold these ingredients not long thin strands so put that in the boiling water i'm guessing six minutes so when your pasta is about two minutes short of being perfect, we're gonna add the broccoli so it can cook in the same water. This broccoli isn't going to cook completely. It's gonna cook only till it's crisp tender. I like it when a little bit of that raw edge has been taken off, but while it still retains all of its great color and crunch. So 90 seconds, two minutes, let your broccoli tell you what it needs. So about two minutes later, your pasta is going to be al dente and your broccoli is going to be crisp tender and we're going to take it out of that boiling water. You want to drain this really well because one of the keys to a great pasta based dish is for there to be no clinging moisture before you add your dressing or your sauce. Now some people would say, well, why don't I just rinse it? Well, rinsing is gonna make your pasta gummy and it's gonna make your broccoli sad. So I like to let gravity in about two minutes of time do the job for me. So we're gonna let this sit until the steam stops billowing. It'll take just enough time for us to be able to make our great dressing. Now I'm going to actually make my dressing in the bowl I'm gonna serve the entire dish to cut down on the number of dirty dishes. Now this is my version of poppy seed dressing. The base is mayonnaise. Now the mayonnaise is going to sort of dissolve in the recipe, but it's gonna give us a rich creaminess that's gonna coat every little squiggle in that cute curly pasta. And then we're gonna add some sugar. Then we have some sherry vinegar. Gonna make this sweet and tangy all at the same time. And this is powdered mustard. What some recipes and what I always call dry mustard, but some people call it powdered mustard. And then we have poppy seeds and then salt and pepper. And now all we have to do is stir it together until it's nice and creamy. And now it's time for our pasta and our broccoli to go in. So it's no longer screaming hot. A lot of the moisture has cooled down and steamed off, but it's still a little bit warm. And that's one of my secrets to a great pasta salad is, you let the pasta go into the dressing before it's completely cold, because it's gonna absorb a lot of that flavor as it finishes cooling down. Give it a good stir. And then we're gonna add what gives this recipe its special edge, and that's our muscadines. So when it comes to muscadines, we have choices. There are black ones, red ones, and bronze ones that can look a little bit green. And any of those are gonna be great in this recipe. So the trick is to find the muscadine that's in the best form where you are. There's also a new muscadine. There's over 150 different kinds and apparently there's room for one more because lately, there are these tiny little muscadines. And what makes them separate from the others is they don't have seeds, which make them a great addition to a recipe like this because all you have to do is put them in the bowl. But I like to mix things and get a little of all of them. So I also have some of the traditional 
ruby colored, the black ones, the beautiful wine colored ones. And for these, you're gonna wanna cut them in half and pick out the seeds. It takes only a couple of minutes. And last but not least, we have some of these beautiful bronze green ones. Now, some people say that if they're green or bronze, they're scuppernongs, whereas the dark colored ones are muscadines. I don't really know. I think it depends on where you grew up and what you call your grapes. I just know that they all taste delicious. The perfume of these are amazing. You always know you have a great muscadine if it makes the whole house smell good. And now for a little bit of a savory edge, we have some finely sliced shallots and we're gonna fold it together. Now, when you start stirring this, you may say, there is not enough dressing. There is no way that that's enough dressing on here. Oh yes, it really is, because we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it chill, which will take a good two hours. You could even do it a day ahead. And what's gonna happen is all of these amazing flavors are gonna come together. They're all gonna come to the party and this dressing's gonna firm up a little bit and perfectly coat each nook and cranny, noodle squiggle, every good grape. Now this is good and chilled. It was in the refrigerator for a couple of hours, but you could do this the night before to get a head start. We have two more great ingredients to go in, and I saved those until the last so that they'll remain crunchy and add a little bit of different texture to this salad. The first is some pecans, just chopped, nicely chopped pecans, or you can use halves if you want to, and then some smoky bacon. But if you want to keep this meatless, no worries. There's plenty going on in this bowl already. And we're gonna stir that in, and this salad is ready to eat. And I think it's time to taste it. So we have our crunch, we have our sweet, we have some savory, we have some tangy all together. I'm going in. You know, that is so good. You can taste everything individually and then it comes together in one magnificent bite. And the star of this show is the muscadine. No other grape tastes like a muscadine. It's sweet, it's earthy, it has its own aroma that is somehow part of its flavor. A muscadine isn't just a fruit, it's its own season. In North Carolina, we know it's September, not by the calendar, but when it's muscadine time, 